Hey class, Professor Steve here. Uh, today we're going to talk carbon. Now, why are we going to spend uh, time on carbon here? Uh, and the answer to that is we're going to spend a lot of time talking about carbon throughout the rest of the class. Uh, and the reason for that is that carbon happens to, to be an element that makes up the backbone for, all, for almost nearly all um, matter of global importance. Um, and the ocean plays a gigantic role in the cycling of all that matter. Now when I say a word like matter, I don't just mean carbon as the backbone, but I mean all the molecules and elements that go together with that in, this, in its cycle. And we'll get to that some of that stuff in, in future lesson. But why does carbon make such a good backbone for, for, for all these relevant uh, compounds? And that is, um, if we look at carbon, number six on the periodic table, uh, what we really want to focus in is this little number right here, this number four. If we take one carbon atom, we see that it has that number one, two, three, four valence electrons. Those are free electrons in its outer shell. Now, I don't want you to be too um, concerned with the complex chemistry or, or, or the terminology here, but what I want you to know is that these, each one of these free electrons is available to bond with another element or compound. And that's what makes carbon such a good building block. Carbon loves to build upon itself or build with other elements. And in the right configuration with the right elements we can build very complex and important um, molecules such as proteins which are important in, in many biological processes including building uh, certain types of tissues and, and generating certain types of energy. Same goes for carbohydrates. Uh, very important energetically in biological processes and in the building blocks. <clears throat> Another example are lipids, um, which are biologically relevant to cellular membrane um, structure. And in completely different configurations, with some of the same elements and some others, um, we, get, we get molecules like nucleic acids, uh, things like our RNA and our G G um, sorry DNA, uh, things that we know of as our genetic building blocks, things that make us who we are. Now those are all complex examples of the first type of carbon that you're responsible for knowing, and that is organic carbon. Those were all types of organic carbon, abbreviated OC, organic carbon. Now in order to break it down and, and see what the most basic building blocks of organic carbon compounds are, we're going to take a look at this one here, which happens to be glucose. And you see glucose is made up of one, two, three, four, five smaller organic carbon compounds. All right. If we go in here, and glucose is just a, a very simple molecule of sugar. If we go out and we pull out one of these compounds that it makes, we see that it's made up of one carbon, two hydrogens, and an oxygen. CH2O molecule. Okay, this is the most basic form of organic carbon compound and is the basic building block for all complex ones, whether it be a structural compound or an energy compound. CH2O is the most basic type of carbohydrate, simple molecule of sugar. If we pull in some of these, build up some of these more complex ones that we saw on the previous slide, like a lipid or like a DNA or RNA, nucleic acid molecules, we can combine these all in different ways to provide, or to produce, I should say, simple energy compounds, sugars, very complex energy compounds and building blocks, like more complex food sources and fuels. If we arrange them in very, very, very different ways, um, we can build a living organism, like a single cell uh, organism, such as a bacteria or stack one upon the other billions of times and we can build a complex organism, multicellular organism, like a, like a person. Um, I just want you to understand that this is all part of, of what can be built, but what I really want you to focus on is that when I say organic matter, I'm talking about this building block right here, the CH2O molecule, the most basic form of carbohydrate or simple sugar molecule, which can then be used to build all these other things. But for the purposes of class, when I say organic carbon, carbon or organic matter, I want you to think inside this box right here. Now the other kind of carbon that you guys are responsible for knowing is the opposite of organic matter, which is inorganic matter, or I should say inorganic carbon, abbreviated IC. There are various types of inorganic compounds, carbon compounds that make up different chemicals that we will not be concerned with here, but uh, the, the most naturally abundant one and the most globally relevant one is one that we should all be familiar with, and that's carbon dioxide. 
right? It's very abundant in our atmosphere and in our oceans and in our Earth. Um, carbon dioxide, also known as CO2 chemically, that's one carbon double bonded to two oxygens. And again, not caught up in the chemistry or even the formulas, but for right now we're going to say, where does this come from? Where does this inorganic carbon, which we've probably never thought of it as inorganic carbon before, but it's time to start, where does that come from? And the answer is, it comes from the multicellular organisms. These guys consume some of that organic carbon we talked about in the previous slides. And the byproduct, their waste product, in respiration, they respire CO2. They respire inorganic carbon. Consume organic carbon, respire or exhale or breathe out, if you will, inorganic carbon in the form of CO2. Multicellular organisms do this, unicellular organisms do this, they take in organic carbon, they breathe out inorganic carbon in the form of CO2. Where else can we find inorganic carbon? Combustion. Whenever we burn any kind of fuel source, which is essentially what the multicellular guys are doing, whenever we burn a fuel source, the waste product is CO2, inorganic carbon, in the form of carbon dioxide, and any kind of combustion will do. Burning of earth materials and volcanism. As a matter of fact, volcanoes were the primary source of CO2 to the atmosphere before man came along and started burning fuels and things like a combustion engine in a car, which also started exhaling CO2 into the atmosphere. What's the summary of the summary? two different types of carbon compounds that you're responsible for, for knowing in this class. The organic compound is the first abbreviated OC in the most basic building block. A single molecule of organic compound is the CH2O molecule, single carbohydrate or, or sugar molecule. And the second is inorganic carbon, abbreviated IC, and the only one we will really talk about in this class is carbon dioxide, CO2.